This supernatural horror classic from director Toby Hooper was released in June of 1982, where it earned over 12 times its $10 million budget. The 114 minute story follows an average middle class family living in a California real estate development, whose house is invaded by malevolent spirits that abduct the family's youngest daughter. The tight script was written by none other than Steven Spielberg, who also served as producer for the first time in his storied career. Many years before he was a sitcom mainstay, Craig T. Nelson stars as the Patriarch, who alongside Joe Beth Williams goes absolutely stir-crazy, attempting to unravel the mystery of their missing daughter. Their emotionally charged performances lend a great deal of realism to the ridiculous events on screen. At only six years of age, the young Heather O'Rourke is excellently cast as the little girl, who signals the arrival of the frightening beings by excitedly remarking, they're here. Meanwhile, Zelda Rubenstein provides a convincing turn as an eccentric medium brought in to assist a troubled family with their noisy ghost problem. God, oh my God, my baby. No. Shh. Bastard, she took the baby! Help her, help her, can't you hear what's happening? Help her! Bearing a lot of similarities to Spielberg's style of medium-length shots with plenty of dynamic movement, Hooper fills the anamorphic canvas with beautiful compositions and fantastic lighting. It is annoying, though, that simple TV static is shown to produce a bright strobe light effect for some reason. And seriously, has Coach ever heard of using a sleep timer? It's Nelson's careless late-night viewing habits that seem to set the picture's bizarre events into motion. This includes one horrifying sequence when a large, scraggly tree comes to life and snatches a small boy from his bed. I can guarantee you, had I seen Poltergeist at his age, that scene would have kept me up at night. Another great VFX shot has a paranormal investigator clawing his own face off in what is quickly revealed to be a paranoid hallucination, but is no less disturbing because of it. In addition to the unseen terrors of a spiritual portal, the picture also incorporates creepy clown dolls and real-life skeletons to deliver the scares. But despite these graphic sequences, the filmmaker successfully appealed the MPAA and had the movie awarded only a PG rating, as PG-13 wouldn't exist for a few more years. Jerry Goldsmith's lullaby-inspired score is heavy on strings, giving most of the picture an appropriately unsettling feeling. Following what seems like a clean resolution of the primary conflict, the picture's 20-minute denouement seems particularly tacked on. This ending does boast some impressive special effects work from Industrial Light and Magic, however, which scored the picture one of its three Academy Award nominations, all of which lost to Spielberg's other 1982 release, E.T. The movie's success also evolved into a full trilogy, and there's even talk of a future reboot. A well-paced and distressing movie allegedly haunted by a curse of its own. Two of its actresses would not survive the 1980s. This film makes you wonder how safe we really are in our own bedrooms. Poltergeist delivers unique scares with ambitious production value. And here are your thoughts on the film. Applauding the music, visuals, and scares, you thought this is a great film. And inherently, the mark of any good horror movie is how long you're left unsettled by what you've just witnessed. And this picture definitely lingers. I thought it was great as well. 